Welcome to the Ebenezer Estridge Moravian Church. We pray that this time of worship will be a blessing to you. Please listen attentively to the following as it would aid in your comfort and safety with us. 
Always sanitize your hands upon entry into and exit from the sanctuary. As you enter, kindly allow an usher to guide you to your seat. We ask that you wear your mask at all times. If you feel the need to remove your mask, we recommend that you leave the sanctuary quietly, find a private place and remove your mask using the straps. Do not touch your body, especially your face. Take deep breaths and relax for a moment before returning. Before exiting the bathroom, kindly wash your hands thoroughly for 20 seconds while adhering to the correct hand washing protocols. Be reminded to sanitize your hands upon re-entry into the sanctuary. Avoid touching surfaces. Do not share hymn books, Bibles, or materials of any kind. Do not shake hands or hug anyone. You may extend your hand in greeting, but refrain from touching. We know that the Lord is indeed calling you, but we can assure you not on your cell phone. So kindly select the silent or vibrate mode. We now invite you to remain reflective as we worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Good morning, church. Good morning. Welcome is extended to those in the sanctuary and those worshiping on Zoom, Facebook, and our YouTube. Good morning. The watchword for the week says, If anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has passed away. Behold, the new has come. 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 17. We will now stand for the call to worship. God has promised to me our hiding place and to always protect us. We come, we come to, to worship God and to give thanks for God's great promises. God has promised to guide you along the best pathway for your life. We come to give our thanks and praise for God's blessed guidance. God has promised, I will advise you and watch over you. And God will surround those who trust in God with unfailing love and songs of victory. We come to offer to God our thankful prayers and songs of joyful celebration. Because we are forgiven, freed from our past mistakes, and can start again. Amen. We'll now sing our opening hymn, 259, Oh, what a wonderful, wonderful day.
of mystery and mercy. We gather to worship you in humility and hope because we believe you have the power to change the world, to change the world for the better with your love. We gather to worship you, trusting that no one or situation is beyond your concern or your embrace. Such love astonishes us. Without your grace, we cannot imagine such love. Inspire us with a vision of love, which will change the world and our lives through the love and mercy we meet in Jesus Christ, your Son and our Savior. Together, God of love and mercy, when we pause for a moment in your presence, the daily details of our lives press in on us. We recall things left undone, opportunities ignored. We remember careless words spoken, disappointments that trouble our souls. In silence, we offer to you our misspent moments and missed opportunities.
prayers of intercession and thanksgiving, compassionate and ever-loving God, you are always more ready to forgive than we are to confess. And you long to celebrate or return to your joyful presence. Receive with gladness the prayers of our people as we come to you in confident hope, saying, Be glad, you righteous, and rejoice in the Lord. Together. Shout for joy, all who are true of heart. You have proclaimed the kingdom of God among us, O Christ, and showed us your model of loving compassion as the true path of leadership. Be with our Federation, St. Kitts and Nevis, and all our Caribbean lands. Be with all in authority that we may work in harmony with you to create a world of feasting and reconciliation. Be glad, you righteous, and rejoice in the Lord. Shout, Shout for joy, joy all, all who are, are true of heart. heart. You welcome sinners and feast with them. You restore the prodigal and embrace the elder. Find all who are lost and return them to your homes. Protect those who work in dangerous, dirty, and dis disreputable jobs. Give security and joy to all who labor and yet are poor and hungry. Expand the hearts of those who are dutiful and proud, that the whole human race may celebrate together with music and dancing. Be glad, you righteous, and rejoice in the Lord. Shout for joy, all who are true of heart. We pray for those who are in need, that your new creation may bring them hope. We embrace gratefully the abundance of your gifts to us. We pray for all who mourn and has suffered loss in any way. Be glad, you righteous, and rejoice in the Lord. Shout for joy, all who are true of heart. Protect us from presumption and judgment, O God, and lead us into the joyful celebration of your new creation on earth, that we may share in the generous banquet of your victory through forgiving compassion and enjoy the reconciliation of all people in the power of your spirit. We will now stand and sing the choral response. Rejoice in the Lord always and all my help. Rejoice in the Lord.
responsive reading from source from his defeated, sorry. A responsive reading from source from Psalm 32. Blessed is he whose transgression is forgiven, whose sin is covered. Together. again. Psalm 32, it reads, Blessed is he whose transgression is forgiven, whose sin is covered. Blessed, Blessed is the man unto whom the Lord imputeth not iniquity, and in whose spirit there is no God. When I kept silent, my bones waxed old through my roaring all the day long. For day and night thy hand is heavily upon me. My moisture, My moisture is turned into the drought of summer. I acknowledge my sin unto thee, and mine iniquity have I not hid. I said, I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord, and thou forgavest the iniquity of my sin. For this, For this shall everyone that is godly pray unto thee in a time when thou mayest be found. Surely in the flood of great waters, they shall not come nigh unto thee. Thou art my hiding place. Thou shalt preserve me from trouble. Thou shalt come past me about with songs of deliverance. I will instruct thee and teach thee in the way which thou shalt go. I will guide thee with my eyes. Be ye not as the horse or as the mule, which have no understanding whose mouth must be held in with bit and bridle, lest they come near unto thee. Many, Many sorrows shall be to the wicked, wicked but he that, that trusteth in the Lord, mercy shall compass him about. Be glad in the Lord, and rejoice, ye righteous, and shout for joy, all ye that are upright in heart. youth and children will now um, stand sorry for the hymn 238 I was sinking deep in sin
lifted me when nothing else could help. Love lifted me. Remain standing, young people and children, and please join me as we pray and lift them up unto God this morning. Our Father and our God, how awesome you are that you can once again bring us together in this fashion to worship and praise your name. As we lift up our young people to you today, Lord God, and, and the children, we ask a special blessing and a special touch upon them. May you continue, Lord God, to surround them with a protective hudge, a covering, Lord God, of your precious blood. We pray that they will walk in excellence, Lord God, that they'll be favored in the eyes of humanity and indeed in your eyes. That you will help them, O oh God, in their schoolwork, in their studies, whether it be primary school, secondary school, tertiary education, or in the workplace, Lord God, that they will be a witness for you, that they will be able, Lord Heavenly Father, to control themselves even when there's temptation around, even, Lord God, when they have leaders, bosses, supervisors, that may be, Lord, attacking them in some way, that may be they, where they may endure unfair treatment, Lord God, that they'll be able to shine forth, that they'll be able to endure, that they'll be able to hold on unto you. So continue to walk before them, Lord God, and continue, Heavenly Father, to lead them in paths of righteousness as they seek to be witnesses wherever they find themselves. In Jesus' name, amen. We will now be blessed with our readings for this morning. The Hebrew readings taken from Joshua chapter 5, verses 9 through to 12. This will be read by Sister Joya Allen Alexander. The epistle reading is taken from 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verses 16 through to 21. This will be read by Sister Imani Komri. Lastly, the gospel reading will be taken from Luke chapter 15, verse 1 through to 3. Um, and verse 1 to 32. This will be read by Sister Zianis coming. Good morning, church. Good morning. The scripture reading today must be The scripture reading is taken from Joshua chapter 5, verses 9 to 12. Here beginneth the reading. And the Lord said unto Joshua, This day have I rolled away the reapproach of Egypt from off of you. Wherefore the name of this place is called Gilgal to unto, unto this day. And the children of Israel encamped in Gilgal and kept the Passover on the fourteenth day of the month at even the plains of Jericho. And they did eat of the old corn and the land of Morrow after the Passover unleavened cakes and parched corn in the self same day. And the manna ceased on the morrow after they had eaten of the old corn. Of the land, neither the children of Israel manna any more. But they did eat unto the fruit of the land of Canaan that year. This is the word of the Lord. Good morning, church. The scripture reading today is taken from 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verses 16 to 21. Wherefore, henceforth, know we no man after the flesh. Yea, though we have known Christ after the flesh, yet no henceforth know we him no more. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. All things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. And all things are of God, who hath reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ, and hath given to us the ministry of reconciliation. To wit, that God was in Christ, reconciling the world unto himself, not imputing their trespasses unto them, and hath committed unto us the word of reconciliation. Now then we are ambassadors for Christ, as though God did beseech you by us. We pray you in Christ's deed, be ye reconciled to God. For he hath made him to be sin for us, who knew no sin, 
that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. This is the word of the Lord. Good morning, everyone. The gospel reading, sorry. The gospel reading is taken from Luke chapter 15, verses 1 to 3, 11b to the end. This is one of my favorite. Then drew near unto him all the publicans and sinners for to hear him. And the Pharisees and scribes murmured, saying, This man receiveth sinners and eateth with them. He spake this parable unto them, saying, a certain man had two sons, and the younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the portion of goods that father to me, and he divided unto them his living. And not many days after the younger son gathered all together, and took his journey into a far country, and there wasted his substance with what was living. And when he had spent all, there arose a mighty famine in the land, and he began to be in want. And he went and joined himself to a citizen of that country, and he sent him into his fields to feed swine. And he would fain have filled his belly with the husk, and the swines did eat, and no man gave unto him. And when he came into himself, he said, How many hired servants of my father's have bread enough to spear, and I have perished with hunger? I will arise and go to my father, and I will say unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before thee, and I am no more worthy to be called thy son. Make me as one of thy hired servants. And he arose and came to his father. But when he was yet a great way off, his father saw him and had compassion, and ran and fell to his neck and kissed him. And the son said unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven in thy sight, and I no more worthy to be called thy son. But the father said to his servants, Bring forth the best robe, and put it on him, and but a ring on his finger, and shoes on his feet, and bring hither the fattened calf, and, killed, and kill it, sorry. and let us eat and be merry. For his, my son, was dead, and is alive again. He was lost, and is found, and they began to be merry. Now his elder son was in the field, and, he, and, and as he came and drew nigh to the house, he heard music and dancing. And he called one of the servants and asked what these things meant. And he said unto him, Thy brother is come, and thy father hath killed the fatted calf, because he hath received him safe and sound. And he was angry and would not go in. Therefore came his father out, and he entreated him. And he answering, saying to his father, Lo, these many years do I serve thee, neither transgressed I at any time thy commandment. And yet thou never gavest me a kid, that I, may make, that I might make merry with my friends. But as soon as this thy son was come, which hath devoured thy living with thy harlots, thou hast killed for him and fatted calf. And he said unto him, Son, Thou art ever with me, and all that I have is thine. It was, meet, it was meet that we should make merry, and be glad for this thy brother was dead, and is alive again, and was lost, and is found. This is the word of the Lord. Please stand for the songs of preparation. Amazing Grace and draw me close to you. Chains are gone. I've been set free. My God.
never see you, never let me go. Draw me close to you.
please be seated. Good morning, church. It is my task this morning to bring the word to you. No, I'm not a preacher. So don't look for the preacher in me, okay? If you want to whip this up and tell me, sing it, that's fine. I'll deliver. But there's no pastor in me. So this morning, I want you to forget the person that is standing in front of you and listen to what God would have given to me in my spirit to share with you. I trust that some soul would indeed be lifted and somebody would be drawn closer to God as a result of this. So God, even now I ask you to hide me behind your cross. Allow me to proclaim your word as clear as you would like. Help some soul to be drawn closer to you and let them not see the person, but hear the word and heed. All these I ask in your name, God. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Now, the story of the prodigal son is very familiar to us, I'm certain. However, I want to turn your eyes in a different direction because most times when we hear about the prodigal son, we start to focus more on the strayaway child. And in some cases, we venture to maybe compare persons that we know with that son. And very rare, we speak about the father. However, this morning, I want us to look at it from a different perspective. And so I would have come up with the topic, the far country. I came up with the topic, the far country, because the truth is, anywhere that we are not close to God, our life is considered to be a far country. So, it's important to note that the story is not really about sins. It is about lostness. Lostness, not badness. Awareness. Hence, let's take the phrase into proper perspective, a far country. The true emphasis, therefore, should not be on the sons, but on the father. It is an unveiling of the heart of God. The central truth of the parable is the picture of the heavenly father's heart of love towards undeserving sinners like ourselves. The passage reveals that the younger son explored in, rebel in rebellion. He knew what he wanted. His desires led him to gamble all in getting what he in getting what God condemned. He loved sin. It's sweet, so I agree. I would love it too. It promised satisfaction to appetite and ambitions, and he was lured by these promises. The fascinations of sin hypnotized him. He had his fling. He rebelled against his father. He shows that he is dissatisfied with his father's provision his father's restrictions, and his father's guidance. It was different, however, with the elder son. He liked it at home, not that he loved his father so much, but like we humans, he wanted to have his own way. He thought he was smart enough to manage his father and to get out of him what he wanted. He loved himself too much to be interested in pleasing anybody but himself. These are good pictures of a sinful man victimized by sin, deluded and deceived by sin, rebelling against the loving restraint of his father. 
we can all relate. Sometimes when someone's father within the church community tend to push them, we tend to, like if they make a mistake, we tend to push them aside and make it our best interest to avoid any type of embrace extended to these individuals. Yeah, we know. All, all, however, the story also enabled us to visualize a picture of a loving God who patiently and lovingly waits for the return of the prodigal. My contention, however, this morning, is that the story represents two wayward sons. They were not slaves, not servants, but sons. The passage that was so ably read in verse 13 indicates that the younger of the two sons had set off for a distant country. If somebody tells you that they are sending you in a far country, your mind start, work, start working immediately. You start to think if you got enough money, how you going to make it out there, what you going to eat, your mind start working. So why, why really do we want to be in a far country with our lives as it relates to God? The far country was not measured by distance. What I want us to recognize today is that anywhere, like I said earlier, a man is away from God or a world without God or one that is forgetful of God. Wherever we are, not in fellowship with God, we do not belong there. It is considered a far country. God promises too much for us to settle to be in a far country. Both sons sought to please themselves. And I want you to listen to the descriptive phrases of the two sons in order for us to understand that it's really not about the sons, but about the faraway country. The younger, he said, Father, in verse 12, give me. He gathered all he had and left. You know, we as young persons, today is Youth Sunday, and if your parents not singing the same line with you, and you have a certain age, you feel like you could just pack up your things and leave. So, like the son, we kind of replicate that a little bit. He squandered his estate in foolish living. And in verse 14, it says, he spent everything. Sometimes you feel like, oh, mommy, go and give me some more. So you spend it. Not realizing that tomorrow is another day. The older, however, he became angry. Verse 28 declares. Verse 18 indicated that he did not want to go in to be a part of the welcome celebration when his brother came home. And in verse 29, he expressed his father, he expressed to his father, I have been slaving. I never disobeyed your orders, yet you never gave me a young goat so I could celebrate with my friends. Typical humans, eh? We like to compare. And sometimes the truth is, they're not really better than us, you know. And lastly, just another reminder for his father in verse 31. He reminded him, he devoured your assets with prostitutes. He had to get in that one because that one was the top one. But today, I want to invite us all to seek to return home from the far country. Whatever far country we may find ourselves in, make your return home. There are a few things that I want you to think about on your return home. The truth is that the far country is a land of poverty. It says that he spent all, there was a famine. It, it was really like that, and it was costly in a far country. It cost, it cost him both his fellowship with his father, it cost him freedom, and it's ironic. That's what he left to get, freedom, but it cost him that. 
It cost them everything. The younger spent all, the older never enjoyed what he had. But in Jeremiah chapter 5 and verse 25, it says, Your sins have withheld my bounty from you. Proverbs 22 and verse 8 says, The one who sows injustice will reap disaster. So iniquity reap vanity. And this brings me back to cotton candy. The first and last time I had cotton candy, it looked so promising, like this nice fluffy candy, and yet it didn't deliver, because as you put it in your mouth, it melts. So it looks good, but it's really not good. So again, I want us to be encouraged and return home to our father from the faraway country. As I said, there are some points I want you to consider upon your return home. Recognize that you're in a desperate condition. A desperate, consi consider it a desperate condition so much so that it's only God who can help you. And if you don't return home, you remain lost. Even though sometimes in the real life we might think, okay, I'm going to go to church. That's not enough. I'm going to join a group. That's definitely not enough. The work that you put in is what speaks for you. Spend time in the word of God and edify yourself because that's the only thing that will last. So in recognizing that there's a desperate need for you to return, I want you to recognize also the Father's sufficiency. How many of my Father's hands, how many of my Father's hired hands have more than enough food? Those were the thoughts of the Son. Also, be determined to return home. Don't just say it. Act it. Do it. It says in verse 18 to 20, I'll get up and go to my father. So he got up and went to his father. He arose and came to his father. He recognized the condition and he returned to his father. I will arise and reform. No, that's what he said. Information is good, but it's not enough. Also, I want us on our return home to know that the Father is going to receive you. Be assured that he's going to receive you. In verse 20, it says, the Father was looking for him and he saw him. He had compassion. He loved him. He ran to him in eagerness to restore him. He fell on his neck and kissed him. That's a sign of restoration. He didn't get to the confession stage, but, however, he knew that he would have sinned, and so he came home to his father and also to God. So today, I want to encourage us to know that the Father in heaven is waiting to receive us. No matter what situation you are in, no matter how dark it may seem, no matter how lost you may feel, the Father is waiting to embrace us all. So make that step. It doesn't matter who is looking. It doesn't matter how you think persons may look at you and say, oh, she this, she that. People will talk. Make the effort and return home to the Father from that faraway country. The song declares the love of God is greater far than tongue or pen can ever tell. You know how many things people write and pen can't tell that love? That's like immeasurable. So return, there's enough for you. Never mind, you see, Z come. You could come too. There's enough love for you. So return to the Father from your far away country. Thank you.
Thank you, Sister Cindy. We'll now sing our hymn of response, The Love of God.
the Lord. Bless the Lord. Please be seated. A very hearty welcome is extended to all sharing in our worship today. If you are curious and have come to see, if you are weary and have come to find rest, if you are grateful and have come to give thanks, if you are hurting and have come for solace, if you are listening and have come to pray, welcome. There are no visitors in God's house, only family members we have not yet met. If this is your first time worshiping with us, welcome home. We are always glad to meet new members of God's family. If you are seeking a church home, we invite you to make Ebenezer your place of worship. Congratulations and God's richest blessings to all, those celebrating birthdays, anniversaries, and any other milestone. If you are celebrating today or during the course of this week, please to stand. Today is not my birthday, but today, on Tuesday, I'll be celebrating 36 years of an wedding anniversary. I'm standing up on behalf of my brother Tyreek Davis today. Oh, good morning, Thursday. Good morning, church. Today is my birthday. <laughs> Tristan Huggins is also, well, will also be celebrating birthday on the second of this month. Next month, I apologize. Next month, the second of next month. George Harris, who is 90 will be making 90 years um, of age. His birthday will be tomorrow, Monday. Greetings from Sister Vida and the Ham family. <laughs> we'll now sing um, the happy birthday song. <laughs> A happy birthday to you, a happy birthday to you, each day of the year. May you find Jesus there. A happy birthday to you, a happy birthday to you, the best that you ever had. A happy birthday to you, a happy birthday to you. Today. One second, one second. There might be other anniversaries. I mean, 
So let us establish first. Is there any yes. other anniversaries? Any other anniversaries today or during the course of the week? Okay, we will now sing the anniversary song. Happy anniversary, happy anniversary, happy anniversary, happy anniversary, may the good Father and our God, we lift up our celebrants unto you today in a very special way. Maluska, Tristan, Tyreek, and Brother Harris, is it? Yes. Who is 90 tomorrow. And we ask a special blessing upon them, Lord God. We thank you that you have given us the privilege to celebrate with them. We also lift up Sister Alicia and her husband unto you and her family as they celebrate their anniversary, wedding anniversary. We thank you for their example, Lord God. We thank you for the blessing of her womb, her children, and grandchildren. And as they go forth, Lord God, may they celebrate bringing honor and glory unto you so that everything that they do on their day of celebration may be done decently and in order. Continue, Lord God, to enfold them in the embrace of your love. Continue to help them to understand that we can come to you anytime because you are a loving father. And no matter how we imagine or think, our thoughts can't understand your love, but you continue in spite of us to embrace us. So help them to come into the full knowledge of your love, your grace, and your mercy. In Jesus' name, amen. Are there any visitors with us today? No? Okay. Sunday school follows this service. We are reminded to put aside your Lenten sacrificial offering daily. This year's sacrificial offering will go to the Barbados Conference. You can choose any amount as God leads you. We are reminded of our time of prayer and fast every Wednesday during the Lenten season. Be free to choose the type of fast that God will reveal to you. Personal prayer. Set a time for personal prayer and commit to keeping this appointed time with God. We will meet for corporate prayer on Thursday, April 7th. The weekly Lenten services on Wednesdays at 7.15 p.m. here at Estridge under the theme. In His Footsteps goes as follows. This Wednesday, March 30th, step four, consecrate yourself. This will be led by Reverend Sanet Fleming Shonek, Moravian Church, Nazareth. April 6th, step five, commit to the cause. This will be led by Reverend Dr. Alston P. Smith, Moravian Church, Trinidad. The weekly Lenten services by the Christian Council under the theme, Returning to Our First Love at the Pro Cathedral of St. George, George sorry, continues on Wednesdays from 12.10 p.m. to 12.40 p.m. as follows. 30th of March, Salvation Army, Obstacles to Love. 6th of April, Anglicans surrendering to love. Girls Brigade continues on Mondays at 5 p.m. Elders Board Meeting will be held tomorrow, Monday at 5 p.m. via the Zoom platform. Senior Choir Practice on Thursdays at 7 p.m. The Youth Fellowship will meet on Fridays at 7 p.m. I hope to see you all there. Prayer Meeting on Saturdays at 5.30 a.m. 
praise team practice on Saturdays at 5 p.m. And our color offering for the month of March is blue. We continue also to receive a walk-up offering for building. Our annual food fair is returning this year and will be on Saturday, May 28th. Please begin to consider ways that you can be of service. Just one thing that I want to add. Every Wednesday night at 7.15, we gather here at Ebenezer for these Lenten services. To tell you the truth, a shame, shame bad. Because we are here at Ebenezer, but Ebenezer people are not here. People are coming from the other congregations here, and it's embarrassing that people will leave town, leave Bethel, leave Kea and Keys, Canary River, come down here, and we who are the hosts are not here. So I encourage us, I beg are you, I beg are you, come to the services. They are really a teaching moment. We who have been here have learned a lot. And the thing is, it's some of you are not even joining on Zoom if you're not here. Because I check, eh? So I know who's on Zoom and who's not. And it, even if you can't come into the sanctuary, join on the Zoom platform. Join in on, on YouTube so that you are part of, so that we can all together grow. Grow into the likeness of our Savior. We can also learn something. We have put these pastors together, Moravian preachers from the different parts of the world, coming in into our sanctuary on the screen to teach us we would like to see you. So please make an effort, a special effort, to come out this week and next week is the last. Thank you. And you know something, I like to say that we now do nothing in the Moravian church. But when we do, I now come. Thank you, Pastor. Um, <laughs> we'd also like to um, express a special thanks to our keyboardist. He has already left, but Pastor, um, our minister of Touched by Wounded Hands Ministry, Mr. Cleon Lewis, we'd like to say thank you. We will now read our offertory sentence. Together, the, the Apostle Paul declared, declared that, that in Christ, Christ there, there is, is a new creation. creation. Everything, Everything has become new. What new things can God do with the gifts we offer today? With expectant hearts, let us place in God's hands what we have to offer in Christ's name. The offertory hymn is taken from... Him number 262, I know not why God's wondrous grace.
dear God and Heavenly Father, we come to you even now, thanking you for allowing us to bring something to your table. God, we thank you for work where we can go out and earn and bring back a portion to you. Father, we ask even now that those who didn't have to give that you may open up an avenue that they would be enabled, be enabled to receive so that they can bring a portion as well. Father, we ask that you use these funds to further your kingdom. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Just before we close, I know that many of us are waiting to hear when the restoration of our sanctuary will start. We have been waiting on the bill of quantities. I'm happy to report that we have received them. It's going to cost us almost $2 million to, because it's the entire church, it's the entire building, the roof, the floor, the walls, everything need restoring. And so it's going to cost us some money, but um, we are, now we know the amount and we have the bill of quantities. We can move forward with finding, planning where the funds will come from, how we will get them and so on. So you'll be hearing from us soon very soon on the way forward in order for us to bring our sanctuary into, a, you know, looking in a way that the Lord would truly um, be pleased with us. And so just open up your ears and also if you have ideas, you can also bring them. You're welcome. This is not a one-man show. All of us. It's not just the board alone, but all of us. For we know in our congregations, we have people who are equipped and qualified and have ideas and God speaks to all of us. And so we wait on you also for your ideas how we can move forward. As we leave today, we heard the word from Sister Cindy who says she's not a pastor. Praise the Lord. Pastoring is a gift, eh? Sometimes who we have up here as pastor don't really have the gift of pastoring. Sometimes the gift of pastoring is right down there. Because pastoring is, be able, is, in, is being able to meet the needs of persons, being open to persons, ministering to people. So right in our sanctuary, we have some pastors down there who can do a better job at pastoring than even me. Um, but you're, all of us are responsible for proclaiming the word. And we want to give Cindy, not because, um, you know, we want to clap her. We, 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 we thank God for the word that he placed in her. But we want to give her. And I want to do it in the Tanzanian way. The Tanzanian way is that you're going to give clap three times. So we are going, ready? <laughs> All right. We could do it better than that. Now that you know how it's supposed to be done, let me hear you. <laughs> Amen, Cindy. May God continue to anoint you and give you the courage and the boldness to indeed proclaim his word wherever you find yourself. And so as we leave here this morning, we are going, recognizing and acknowledging that our father is a loving father. Not, not, nothing that we could do will keep his love from us. And he's waiting to receive us. So if we find ourselves in a far country, whatever going on in our life, maybe the far country might be some type of sin. Maybe the far country might be some kind of depression. Maybe it might be confusion. Whatever it is, is our far country. Our loving God, Father, is waiting to receive us with open hearts to embrace us and kiss us. So let's go forth with that knowledge and act. Tell us, do it. Come to the Father, the blessing of God Almighty. God, who is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, rest, remain upon us, and abide with us now and forevermore. Amen.